Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at the role of the kidney. And we're going to look at the role of the kidney in both fish as well as mammals. And then we'll go into a brief uh, description of the structure of the mammalian kidney. Firstly, the role of the kidney in fish is for osmoregulation. Uh, so that is to regulate the amount of salt that is inside the fish as compared to outside the fish. And part and parcel with doing that is regulating the amount of water. Uh, that is in the fish. Now before I get into the difference between freshwater fish and saltwater fish, um, what I want to just point out is that the fish have a similar concentration of salt in them. Whether it's a freshwater fish or a saltwater fish, it's the, a similar amount of saltiness which sits uh, between the low salt uh, of the freshwater and the high salt of this salt water. So what this means is that you've got to compare the fish to the surrounding environment that it's in. In freshwater, the water, a uh, freshwater fish, uh, the water is hypotonic while the fish is hypertonic. Conversely, if we're comparing a saltwater fish to salt water, the fish is hypotonic while the water itself is hypertonic. So let's see what that meant. And we said that a freshwater fish is hypertonic to its surroundings. And hypertonic means that it has a greater concentration of salt uh, inside the fish so than outside the fish. So it's hypertonic. Um, part and parcel with that is that we have a low concentration of water inside the fish and a high concentration of water outside the fish when compared to the concentration of salt. So what this means is a freshwater fish has a consistent net movement of water into the fish from the outside. Now this has a few follow-on effects. Firstly, so, uh, freshwater fish don't have to drink water. They're getting enough water being absorbed through uh, osmosis, through their uh, skin, that they don't need to actually drink water. The other thing is that all this water that's coming in, they need to get rid of it somewhere. So they produce a large amount of dilute urine. Uh, and also through the gills, they absorb a little bit of salt. Saltwater fish are exactly the opposite. Okay, they are hypotonic to the surroundings, meaning that inside the fish has less salt than outside the fish. And as we said, if it's got less salt inside, it's going to have more water inside and less outside, creating a net movement of water out of the fish. Now, this water is constantly moving uh, th through the skin outside the fish, that is. If this water is constantly moving out of the fish through osmosis, the fish is going to need to drink lots of water uh, to make up for that loss of water. And... Uh, that is going to mean that there are only small amounts of urine produced because that large amount of water is leaving through that osmosis again. Now the problem with drinking a large amount of water, especially if you're a saltwater fish, is that you're also drinking a large amount of salt. And this salt is excreted or secreted uh, through the gills and back into the water. So there we have it, the difference between a saltwater and freshwater fish. Uh, now basically for both of these, if you start with the premise of which, which is saltier, the water or the fish, you can then make conclusions based on that. So if you can't remember all these, uh, well, it goes, this is more and that's less, if you start with that, you should be able to actually make the deductions to get to the rest. The role of the mammalian kidney is a bit more complicated than that of the fish kidney. So it undergoes filtration uh, as well as reabsorption, uh, in particular reabsorption of water to regulate the water levels within the body, and the secretion of urea. Now the kidney is connected via the ureter to the bladder where that urine or the urea in the urine is stored. Uh, until it is secreted at the urethra. We're going to go into a little bit of the structure of the kidney itself. Uh, so the blood comes into the kidney through the renal artery. 
Uh, and you'll remember that the word renal means pertaining to the kidney, so the renal artery is the artery that takes blood to the kidney. That renal artery then breaks uh, into a large network of blood vessels, uh, which are in the outer cortex of the kidney. Now these blood vessels undergo filtration, and then those capillaries wrap around the nephron, which is uh, where the, that filtrate goes, uh, and reabsorption happens uh, with the capillaries that are wrapped around that nephron, as well as when the nephron dips down into the central salty medulla of the kidney. Uh, the waste products, uh, mainly urea, are then collect through the nephron into collecting ducts, uh, finally into the pelvis uh, of the kidney, or the renal pelvis, uh, and then travel into the ureta to the bladder, as I previously stated. Uh, so I talked about the nephron. The nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. So that's the part of the kidney that actually does this filtration and reabsorption. And you can see here that uh, the capillaries are wrapped very, very tightly around that nephron, uh, allowing for that reabsorption. So once it's filtered into the nephron, that's not the end of it. It can be reabsorbed across that semipermeable membrane between the nephron and that capillary. Each human kidney holds about one million uh, nephrons. In this video we've looked at the role of the fish kidney being osmoregulation and we've looked at the differences between the freshwater and saltwater fish and being hypertonic and hypotonic to their surroundings respectively. Uh, we've talked about the role of the mammalian kidney which is filtration, reabsorption and excretion and we've looked at the structure of the mammalian kidney uh, which is fed blood by the renal artery which goes into the outer cortex uh, and that nephron dips down into the medulla and the collecting ducts leading to the renal pelvis where the urine is then transported to the bladder. Thanks for watching guys. Peace out.